Hello, I want to continue my video on inverse trig functions by looking at problems like this, where you're taking a, a trig function tangent of an inverse trig function. This looks really hard, but it's actually not. Um, the first thing that you need to do here is you have to recognize that an inverse trig function is always an angle. If you just take your hands and kind of cover up the other stuff, the inverse cosine of one third is a question that asks what angle put in the cosine would give me one third. So if you recognize that cosine, inverse cosine of one third is an angle, that's gonna make this conceptually a lot easier to tangle with. If you have angle equals this, you can take the cosine basically of both sides, cosine of the inverse cosine, and suddenly one thing about inverse trig functions is the original trig function with the inverse put into it or vice versa, makes them cancel out. So basically what we know here is cosine of this unknown angle is one third. And the cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse. And recall, we want tan of this, this theta, which is opposite over, uh, sorry, opposite over adjacent. Um, so I'm going to draw myself a triangle. Put the theta anywhere you want, just right here is fine. And so if cosine theta is one third, that means adjacent is one, hypotenuse is three. I want to call this question mark. And from the, the Pythagorean theorem, we know one squared plus question mark squared equals three squared. We're solving for question mark. One plus question mark squared equals nine. Take away your one. Question mark squared equals eight. And now we can take that. That's the square root of eight. Um, and, uh, you know, someone might get cranky with you about the square root of eight. Remember, the square root of eight is the same as the square root of four times two, which is the square root of four times the square root of two. So two roots of two, you know, not a big issue, but just worth mentioning. The square root of eight can be reduced to two roots of two. That is my adjacent, sorry, this is, this is my opposite side. That's my adjacent side. That's my hypotenuse side. So really, we need opposite two roots of two over adjacent, which is one. And so this is now just uh, two roots of two over one, or you could just say two roots of two. Um, so let's try another one, kind of practice this again. The, the key here, notice that this is an angle. It's called an angle. Rewrite it as cosine of an angle and cancel out the inverse because I don't have any inverse there. And then draw yourself a triangle, use what you have and get what you want. And then tangent of that angle for us was, you know, opposite over adjacent. Let's try another one. Okay. Next, we're going to do secant of inverse tangent of a half. First thing is to say note theta theta equals inverse tangent of a half. I know that because an inverse trig function is always an angle. So I'm just going to call that theta. I'm going to take tangent of that angle and tangent of the other side. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're in the clear. And this actually helps you make this a lot easier because tangent of inverse tangent cancel out. You just have tangent equals one half. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So draw your triangle. I'll put theta here. Opposite is one, adjacent is two. Question mark is there. Two squared plus one squared equals question mark squared. So four plus one equals question mark squared. It's five. Take your square root on both sides. And this is the square root of five. So now we want a secant of this. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which is going to be hypotenuse 
over adjacent. That's what secant is. And then, so hypotenuse is going to be root 5. And adjacent is going to be 2. So it's root 5 over 2. This is root 5 over 2. Again, call this an angle. Theta works. Take the tangent of both sides to make this inverse tangent cancel out. And then you have tangent theta equals a number. Stick it on a triangle. Find the other side. Once you have all three sides, you can find the secant of that or any other trig function you want. And that's all there is to it. I hope this helps. Uh, please let me know if there's anything else I can do to make this easier to, to work with.